Hi, I'm Andy Reid. I work with the University of Missouri Extension as a horticulture specialist covering the South Central region. We're here today to talk about composting, and specifically, composting food scraps. Did you know that nearly 20% of the waste sitting in landfills is made up of food scraps? Most of that comes from residential sources. Many, many of those scraps can be used to compost and place on the soil as an amendment. Now, the Department of Natural Resources and the Ozark Solid Waste Management District have also noticed that statistic, and they partner with University of Missouri Extension to bring you this program about composting. So we'll teach some techniques, we'll talk about some ingredients and what goes into a healthy compost pile, and hopefully at the end of the day we'll all learn something. So grab your food scraps and let's get composting. Uh, we're here today with Brady Wilson, the Environmental Services Director for the City of Rolla. Brady's put together a really neat composter here, very low cost, uh, simple to use, simple to build. And I want to have Brady talk to us a little bit. Go ahead, Brady. Thanks, Andy. Yes, I think the key with this composter is low tech, low cost, and it's very basic. Mm -hmm. What we're doing here is using a two-bin system, and this is a, what I would consider a backyard composting system easy for the homeowner to construct again low cost we've got six T posts here and a little bit of fencing to make our two uh, bins we've got a divider down the middle so we put we're putting our more raw or new vegetative materials on one side and then as that breaks down and uh, decomposes we're moving that over to the finished side or the second side of the bin ideally maybe we would have three bins here but we were trying to keep it simple and keep our construction costs down. But again, this is a uh, very low cost, very simple to make at home. If someone's interested in collecting their leaves, grass clippings, kitchen waste, vegetative kitchen waste, and composting that at home to make a soil amendment. You know, talking about composting as a waste management tool, that's all super, and we're doing that on a large scale too, but the resident can do it at home. And uh, better than that for the homeowner is that they produce themselves a nice soil amendment for gardeners, landscapers. Uh, it's neat, kind of fun to watch it decompose and work at home. I do it myself at home and, and use the material annually. So why don't we demonstrate here a little bit? Go, I need to aerate this pile anyway and combine those. So if that works for you, we'll just go Let's ahead and show, show us what you're doing here. Sure. Buddy. This material has been here since last fall, so roughly eight or nine months of decomposition. And you can see that a lot of this is, is somewhat hard to identify what's in here. And right. if, we, if we dig down, we're gonna find a, a rich black humus that is this compost well on its way. On the surface, you can see, well, we've even got some new vegetation growing in this fertile uh, material. And that's gonna be from the, the seeds of the vegetation that was put in here. But you can see a little bit of grass that was put in here. It's kind of matted. Now here's a non-compostable that shouldn't make it into the compost. That's plastic, that won't break down. Mm -hmm. when, when we compost at home in the backyard, we're looking for organic vegetative material and we wanna stay away from meats and dairies and, and things that are gonna cause odors, especially in a residential setting. Sure. So try to stick with leaves, grass, and other kitchen waste that is gonna be uh, non-putrescible or non-odor causing. Stay, stay away from your bones, meat, and basically animal products. That's a simple way to put it. Uh huh. So this morning I'm going to aerate this pile a little bit and that's simply going to be fluff it up with my trusty pitchfork and turn it over. That is primarily to introduce oxygen because the, the microbes that are in here doing the dirty work, breaking down the material, they need oxygen. Now, if we get into a, a non-oxygen environment or an anaerobic environment with anaerobic decomposition, then we experience foul odors and we want to try to avoid that. So, right, right, and, right. And, and keep our microbes alive and, and they basically need the same elements that you and I do and that's food and we're giving them the food. Right. They need oxygen and, and sunlight to do their decomposition work. So let me, uh, let me turn this over a little bit, okay. aerate that and then we'll combine the other half of the pile. So you've got some good looking compost going here, Brady. And, Not bad. And like you said, you, you weren't out here having to turn this every day. No. Anything like that. This was, it's been since last fall since you turned it last? We have turned this this spring, but 
in the eight or nine months that this has been here, I would say we've turned it two or three times. So okay. maybe okay. every three months, Sounds give fun. or take. Mm -hmm. It looks really good. Like you say, it's to the point where it's, it's broken down. You can't identify a lot of the stuff in there. It's doing what we want it to do. And in another six months or so, we're going to have good compost. Now here at the bottom of the pile where it wasn't getting a lot of oxygen, uh -huh. I'll just show you our banana peels and a few paper towels from our break room kitchen waste here at the office. Uh -huh. And uh, it is breaking down. A few paper products won't hurt. I consider that to be organic. Sure. As long as it doesn't have any contaminants on it, glue or mm -hmm. staples or plastic or anything like that. So. And it just kind of shows, too, that even with the banana peels, things like that, they're going to break down a little slower if you don't chop those up. A lot of the recommendations will say to, to cut those into smaller pieces. They will break down faster, but, but you don't have to go through that step if, you, if it's not uh, convenient. Absolutely. Right. But you are right. The, the smaller the particles or the pieces, the faster they'll break down. I think the key there is that you create more surface area for the microbes to work on. So right, right. if you liken it to a, uh, a block of ice, if you set a block of ice out in the sun, uh, a whole block is going to melt slowly. Whereas you, if you crush that block up into smaller pieces, it's going to melt a lot faster. More, more surface area for the heat to work on. Right, right. So now this is your more finished side over here. So now what yes. you're going to do is you're going to put some of this material. I'm going to add to it, and then we're going to start a new compost bin over there. So this summer we can add our, our fresh material to it and start, okay. start a whole new pile. And then come winter, or certainly by next spring, we'll have a really good finished product here. But as you can see, it's well on its way. Brady's going to demonstrate this two-bin system now. And like Brady mentioned earlier, what we're looking at is putting the, fre the fresh or the more green, the newer stuff goes on this side. And as that decomposes, as it matures, he moves it over to the other side. So Brady's just going to demonstrate how this works. Absolutely. So now that we have aerated our older material and I've had a chance to catch my breath, I'm going to combine the, the more raw material, which has been here for a few months too, but it's, it's ready to go in with the uh, what I'll call the finished product and then we can leave it for the rest of the summer, maybe this fall, and let it finish up its decomposition. Now, keep in mind, if you're a homeowner doing this sort of thing, grass is heavy. Uh -huh. I, I would liken it to shoveling snow, so maybe take small scoops. That one's not so small, but it's all kind of clumped together and I'm gonna try to fluff this up and so we get more oxygen in there. That's gonna speed up the decomposition process. I'm going to remove the, most of the woody debris because that's going to really break down a lot slower than our vegetation. And then in moving this pile over and combining the two, that's going to free me up another compartment in the bin here so I can add the really fresh raw materials and start a whole new process. Okay, now we have a good pile there to leave for a few more months to, to break down, and now we can start our pile of fresh material here. So what have you got there, Brady? Uh, this is gonna be primarily grass clippings with a plastic banding that I'm gonna remove. But I'm gonna go ahead and just more experimentally than anything, I'm gonna leave the paper in the compost bin. I like to experiment with things and see how long it takes for them to break down. So we'll just leave that on the bottom. So I've got fresh grass on there. It's full of nitrogen. I'm going to add our our lunchroom uh, kitchen waste here, which is going to be... Tell us about that, Brady. What do you guys... You're going to get a little uh, snapshot into my diet. <laughs> it looks like you eat a lot of bananas. Largely, <laughs> lot of potassium. largely fruit based. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so this is, there's even a paper towel in there. It's probably got a uh, apple core wrapped up in it, which is fine. That will decompose as well, too. Um, so we've got apple cores, banana peels. We've got some strawberry crowns there. So th th this is a good basis for a new pile. And so as, as time goes on, you guys, uh, 
uh, more yard waste, these types of things, more leaves, I'm assuming you'll come in and you'll be able to add that on here and increase that carbon material that's yeah. some of this nitrogen. Yes, that's a really good point. You don't, you don't want to go just strictly nitrogen or, or uh, strictly green vegetation. You want to add your brown vegetation in there. That's primarily for us going to be leaves. So mm -hmm. we'll rake up some of these leaves around here. We've got plenty and we can add that so we've got a good nitrogen to carbon ratio and, and mix it up. You don't want to try to compost just one type of material by itself. Sure, that's great. Well, thanks a lot, Brady, for having us come out here today. Glad to I do it. Really appreciate sure. it. Sure, thanks, Andy. Well, Brady, we've been talking a lot today about composting on uh, from more of the consumer or the homeowner's side. I know that you guys here at the city of Rolla are doing a lot of really neat things on a little bit larger scale. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Sure, and of course, you know, in the city, we collect yard waste from our customers. That's going to be their grass clippings, leaves, small sticks, and if they uh, have an occasion to throw in kitchen scraps, that's not going to be an issue either. We pick them up in the brown paper, biodegradable bags, all that gets ground up and composted so it all breaks down into a humus or, or a compost that can be reused, and we have a giveaway program for our residents. We are using composting on a on a larger scale for waste management purposes and the, the, the benefit is the end product that can go back into nature, back into the soil and here in Missouri, as you know, uh, we, we need all the help we can get with most of our soil. So. And I know a lot of gardeners in the area that utilize that compost and really have some great results off yes. of it. Yes, I, I do that myself and um, I'm happy with it. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's a neat uh, experiment and project to do at home. If you do that, it doesn't take a ton of work. Just like you saw that we did here this morning, you can pile that stuff up, leave it for months at a time, and turn it when you feel like it. I, re I would recommend doing that every three to six months, depending on how fast you want it to break down and sure. how, how much space you've got available in your yard to let that stuff pile up. But uh, in terms of composting, I see a trend towards uh, adding other organics to the yard waste. For years and years, we've just handled yard waste material, strictly leaves and grass and other shrubbery, but now I see communities going to large-scale food waste composting sure. and even adding other inert uh, products such as uh, drywall board or gypsum board being uh, primarily lime. Once that's ground up, it can be added to compost and even be beneficial in uh, as a neutralizer, helping to lower the pH and or to control odors if you have an odor problem. Mm -hmm. So it's like a great idea. Add some calcium to the pH or to the uh, compost. Absolutely, and as we see uh, more and more landfills filling up, and and us trying to conserve landfill space, I think we'll see more and more things being added to large-scale community composting projects. Oh, that's great. All right, thanks, Brady. Thank you, Andy.